God is so good. God is too. All right, y'all, if I start crying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. Woo. Amen, amen, amen. Bless amen, us. Amen. He blessed us so abundantly. Amen. And uh, we're just so grateful to him. The sun is shining. Amen. And the sun, as someone, is always shining in our lives if Hallelujah. we accept it. <coughs> so he's blessed us with strength and health. Let's stand on the two feet that he's Hallelujah. blessed you with. Praise the Lord. Let's welcome him Praise God. into our hearts and minds. before his presence with thanksgiving and enter into his course with praise. Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Father in heaven, we just want to thank thee for allowing us to be able to come in to your presence to dwell and tabernacle with thee. Thank you for allowing us to be co-labors with thee. Thank you for making man in your own image. We just simply ask that we be a reflection of your character. Endow us with the Holy Ghost power. Empower our minds to do thy will and thy good pleasure. Help us to be the call out ones willing to do thy will and thy good works. 
not because we're worthy, but because we ask and claim in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall I repeat the full commandment, which is found in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11, where it reads, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughters, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strain that within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in the midst, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and how. So if this is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for taking the opportunity to worship with us online and to be in person. Be blessed to know that you are a blessing because God blesses those who he loves. So let the Holy Spirit reign in your heart, in your homes, in your hospital beds, wherever you may be. And thank you for clicking on the Brian Seventh-day Adventist Church worship service today. For this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're all here. We're all here in need of the Lord to be transformed in his image. that is done for you. 
think of what he's done for all of us. He's just God. Oh 
for you. if you don't mean it. Mm. Don't be mistaken. Because we can say anything, do anything, and think we're going to get saved. But there's wisdom. There's power. There's peace when you allow him to lead you according to his time pace. Each one of our lives. We can't usurp him. We stay behind him. Let him guide us through the path he wants us to travel. He leadeth me, O blessed thought.
responsive reading will be coming from Exodus 14, 1 through 14. Exodus 14, 1 through 14. And when you have it, say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they camp For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land. The wilderness has closed them in. Now it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled in the heart of Pharaoh and his servants were turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Also, he took 600 choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt with captains over every one of them. So the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them by camping by the sea, beside Pi Haroth, before Baal Zephron. Then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Ponder on that for a second. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall never again see them forevermore. Altogether, the Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Not. You should not be seated. I was just, it was a test. It was a test. For all the visitors that are here today, we memorize the Sabbath school lessons memory verse. And it's always found on Sabbath's lesson. So you have seven full days to get it down. Amen. It's coming from 1 John 4, verse 10. For this is love. All right. Not that we loved him, but that God sent his son to die for an atoning sacrifice for us. Amen. 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 Now, I have a daughter, and there's no way in the world I'm letting her down to die for anybody. <laughs> and this is just God's grace and his mercy towards us Amen. if we continue to stay focused on his words. Now, I memorized it. Now, we're going to get it with everybody, even those that are listening online and watching online. We're going to repeat 1 John 4.10. All together. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Did I see Elder Hawkins walk in here a few minutes ago? Amen. I, I did see Elder Hawkins walk in here. And I just want to let you know, folks, that that's just the power of God working. You know, we, um, we um, had talked about evangelism, 
and we're talking about evangelism, amen? And we're talking about evangelism in every ministry in the church, amen? Every ministry in the church, amen? Amen, amen. And I want to let you know that the um, Pinnacle Apartments, uh, we're doing fine. We're just going through the mark of the beast, the seal of God, and uh, it's going well, amen? We met with them yesterday. But I was just, and I want to take this opportunity also to thank all of the um, young people in this church. I want to thank the older ones too, but I want to thank the younger people in the church and what they're doing um, in, in, in the, like with the Pathfinders, with the communications department. And you know, we had talked about, what would it, you know, we had talked about there are about 95 to 120 people that go through here every week, come to Berean. And what if we could double that number? What if, what if every Sabbath you invited somebody to worship with you here at Berean? Amen? Stay with me now. I was talking with one of the millennials in the communications department, and they said that if we can get, like if we use Facebook, amen, Jared? Amen. Uh, YouTube. How many know about Facebook and YouTube? Right. Not too many people. Everybody should know about it. <laughs> but guess what? If Berean were on Facebook or YouTube every Sabbath, and you had a friend and asked them to worship with you, and all they had to do was what? Turn into Facebook or YouTube, guess what? How many people would you have worshiping with you? Is that a possibility? Is that a possibility? You know, they say we're downtown, and when people come to Houston, what church would they look for? They would look for the Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, I'm not going to go to a church if I don't think it's going to rain there. Right. Amen? Yeah. Y'all looking at me strange. Mm-hmm. Y'all looking at me strange. But I believe that when you tell someone about, I mean, I saw Brother Hawkins walk in here. Huh. And I could barely compose myself. You know why? Because the Spirit of God has moved in his life through the prayers that we have offered for him. Amen. And church, I trust me, we talk about the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's not going to come until every one of us begin to tell about the second coming of Jesus. You can see all the things about, these, about the North Korea, about Donald Trump, but when every one of us begin to tell about the Spirit of God coming, then Christ will come. Amen? So I want you to think about that. We're, we're working with some things for the communications department. Our communications leader is going to let you know when that's taken care of. I want to let you know on the 26th of May is uh, going to be Security Sabbath. What did I say? Security, security Sabbath. Sabbath. We want to make sure that everybody's secure. We're going to have a security drill. Amen? To make sure that everybody's safe. On May 12th, we're having Pastor Brooks from the conference. He'll be here speaking on Mother's Day. And on the 30th, mm-hmm. on the 30th of June, what's going to happen on the 30th of June, church? Pastor. Y'all don't sound like you're too excited about having a new pastor. You must really love me. No, 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 no. On the 30th of June, we will have Pastor Norwood will be coming our new pastor. Amen? Can we say amen? amen. And we're preparing, we're preparing for him to come. So I just want to continue to encourage you. Uh, continue to tell folks about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Thank you and be blessed. time to welcome some visitors. Yes, sir. Amen. So if you, if you are a visitor and you came for the first time or it's your second time and we didn't smile or shake your hand or give you a hug, just want you to raise your right hand and wave it at me if you don't mind. Praise the Lord. 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 Now they're just beaming, smiling at me. Yeah, there it is. There it is. They're just beaming. Where are you all from? And if you don't mind, you can tell us your name. Lord. She found her new church. Say amen. 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 Hello. Sorry. Amen. 
Happy Sabbath, church. My name is Lavinie. Um, I just want to welcome everybody for coming out today mm-hmm. at Bury Inn. Um, it's happy to see everybody here yes. today, all these beautiful people, mm-hmm. you know, here with us today. Yes, ma'am. We do have two visitors. Mm-hmm. I must apologize before if I slaughter your name. I'm sorry. I'm very bad at names. So we have... Amelie Botex and Owens Delva, are they still here? Happy Sabbath, glad to have you here. Also, I'd like to welcome our um, members, our family, and for our second time visitors. I hope that that everyone will have a blessed day and a blessed Sabbath today, and have a great day and joy in the presence of the Lord.
the purpose for worship is to let God know that we want to tell him, thank you for being so kind, Amen. so gracious, All right. so loving, Amen. so merciful, Amen. that it gets down in your soul. Amen. Huh. This is nothing but a building. Amen. We are the church. Amen. It's got to get in your hands and your feet, Amen. down in your soul. So when you leave this place, somebody will be encouraged to tell Hey, my brother, hey, my sister, I may not be going what you're going through, but guess what? I went through. I made it. Not because I made it, but because God allowed me to make it. Stewardship is just an extension of worship because it lets us know that we can be co laborers with God through our means, our time, and our offering. So I just want to simply allow the deacons or the officers to come to lift the morning tithes and offering. Because if you felt that song, I felt that song moving in my feet, my soul, and my heart. Shall we bow heads for a word of prayer? Father in heaven, you say if you were hungry, you wouldn't even tell us. You own the cattle on a thousand hills created the world, the earth that we know, in six days, and then chose to rest. Not because you were tired, but because you needed man to know that we needed an example of not working ourselves to death, not living ourselves to death, not thinking that anything we could do is important. Because if that was the case, you would have made man on the first day. But thinking, we want to simply thank you for allowing us to be created on the sixth day so that we don't get ahead of ourselves. So, Lord, thank you for stewardship so that we don't get ahead of ourselves and that we can simply come and give a love expression. Because, Lord, we could never give enough. We could never live enough. But, Lord, what we want to do is give what we can while we can, when we can, as long as we can. So bless this offering to be a token of appreciation for what you are doing, what you have done, and what you will continue to do. But Lord, if you never do anything else, we just want to come to say thank you for blessing us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
and rob God. Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. The commentary to that text says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that, they may, that there may be meat in my house. If professing Christians will faithfully bring to God the tithes and offering, his treasury will be full. There will be no occasion to resort to fairs, lotteries, or parties of pleasure to secure funds for the support of the gospel. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creature, living Praise Him above. i 
something I'm not ashamed to say. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes a troubled sea. My Lord, my Lord. Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me. Your love is so much stronger. Whatever troubles me, sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you. church. As you're preparing your prayer cards, I just wanted to let you know that every Wednesday night from 7 to 8, we are coming down to the church to do fill up. Because from Monday to Friday, Monday to Sabbath, it's a little challenging. And so if you need a fill up, you can meet us here at Wednesday night from 7 to 8. And the prayer request that you're getting also to place in these boxes from, on Thursdays at 9 from 10 o'clock to 10 o'clock, we'll be praying and interceding on your prayer request. When I was coming up here figuring out what I was going to um, pray about today, you know, uh, I was doing devotion with my daughter, and it was talking about Jonah. Everybody remember Jonah? He was a prophet that was wanted to run from God, but God um, had him do his bidding anyway. But for the last 33 years of my life, I've read that story, but I never thought of it anything past just Jonah. But when I was watching the video, I recognized that the story wasn't about Jonah. It was all about the people that God was wanting to save. The memory verse talks about that God, this is, God, this is love, that we didn't love him first, but God sent his son. There's something that we are all tri having trials with. And the interesting thing is we have a God that sits high and looks low, and we can come boldly to his throne and drop our cares to him. And we also have to remember that God is so strong that in the midst of our trials and in the midst of our backsliding and backbiting, God will prepare a sideway prophet. He will create a crazy big fish to get your attention to worship him. And sometimes it's going to take a mountain. Sometimes it's going to take a sea. But God has a funny way of getting our attention. My wife, who has lost her vision for about five, the last five months, just got her vision back. Amen. We have an elder sitting right behind us that was supposed to be a paraplegic. No use of the hand, the legs and the arms, supposed to be a paraplegic. God is trying to get our attention, and he will do it by any means necessary. Now, if you have a care on your mind, a care that you have for somebody else or yourself, 
we just want to remind you that you could come on down, that you could get a prayer through. And you could do that now because it is so important in these dead times that we drop our cares and our petitions. Because God is reminding us it's not about the, the things that are happening overseas. It's not happening the cops shooting um, people that look like us. It's not the, the stock market going up and down. God is going to come when we proclaim his name, his message, and the good news of the gospel. That somebody came and died for our sins. That's when God is going to come. And so if God needs to bring a mountain, a blind eye, get you close to being paraplegic, that's what he's going to do. Let us bow our heads. Dear only Father, Lord, I thank you again for giving, giving us your full and undivided attention. Lord, we recognize that we need you more than we ever needed you before. Lord, I lift up Brother Mick Harvey in a very special way. Lord, he had a fall. But Lord, we understand that you are the great physician and that you went down to his bedside despite the surgeries and despite all the rigmarole. Lord, you are still have angels ministering to him. Lord, we have also Vivian Burton, who had a hip replacement. And Lord, we know that she's doing well because she decided to come and listen to pastors preach two weeks ago. And we know that your spirit's continuing with her. Lord, we want to thank you for being with Sister Lakeithia Walker. Lord, we know that your presence is here with her. Because, Lord, there was an accident that took place. And your grace spared her life and her children's lives. Lord, we have to thank you because even though we don't have a formal pastor from the conference, we have the head elder who's doing the job as pastor. But Lord, in a couple of weeks, we will have Pastor Robert Norwood. And Lord, I ask that you gird him with your presence so that he could lead this flock to usher in your second coming. Lord, I also want to thank Elder Hawkins for being with him and allowing him to stay focused despite the challenges that the Satan got permission from God and said, I want to just test him. Lord, I just want to thank God for being with my wife that after five long months of having headaches and lost vision, Lord, sh sh the symptoms are gone. And Lord, that we could also thank you for all the praise and all the blessings that you've given us with our family, our finances, Lord, the health, Lord, being able to keep us when we just wanted to throw in the towel. And Lord, I also wanted to spread a special blessing on those that are tuning in online to come in and just hear a word from you. Lord, there are individuals that are faithful with their tithes and offering that never even stepped foot in this church. But Lord, they're just reminding us that your grace is still sufficient. So Lord, I pray that your presence is in this place. I lift up Elder Willie Walker as he brings the message. Lord, I ask that you gird him up. Lord, that he holds nothing back, that you allow him to speak your word on high. Because, Lord, there's somebody in this church around this world that is tuning in today that needs a word from you. So, Lord, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. And I thank you for the mountains. I thank you for the valleys. I thank you for the partial blindness. I thank you for allowing us to be in the hospital because, Lord, it will bring us closer to you. Lord, your word says consider it pure joy when various trials come because it's building something within us. So, Lord, I thank you again for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Giving praise. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Want to thank bless. I give him praise. Amen. It is great to stand before you this afternoon. It is a blessing. God is good. And we are here to praise his holy name today. I'll tell you, it was a blessing, and I know that you've heard it a couple of times, but to see Elder Hawkins, I talked to him on Thursday, and he said he was going to try to be here, but I thought he was going to just slither in and kind of get on a pew and sit still, but you know that that's not his nature. God is good. If you would have been in the back to witness how he was received, you would have thought a rock star hit the house. But that's how much we love you, my brother. We love you so much, and we've missed you. And uh, we're just glad that God has saw fit to have you back with us. And I'm not going to steal his testimony because Lord knows he's got one. And, and I know that in the coming weeks and, and months, you're going to hear it from him. Uh, we just want to thank each of you for being here today. We just continue to pray for our new pastor that's coming June the 30th, Pastor Robert Norwood. Amen. <clears throat> and we just uh, been praying that uh, God is going to use him in a mighty special way. He has blessed this church in a mighty special way. And we give him all the praise and all the glory and all the honor, all the time. As I stand today, it's been a tough week. But it seems like all of them are that way. But the thing that you can say is you're here to talk about it. Amen. 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 You're here to talk about it. And that in itself is a blessing. It's a blessing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace, for your mercy, for your love. 
now as I stand before your people. Lord, I ask that you diminish me as you increase so that the words that I speak, they will see you and not me. And so I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, Lord, they be acceptable in your sight today. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading today was taken from Exodus 14, and I'm going to read in your hearing verses 1 through 4. And verse 1 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihahirath, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal-Zephon, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. After studying about this exodus, it was just, it was just amazing how <clears throat> the Israelites murmured and complained <clears throat> every step of the way, it seems like. And after during this study of Exodus, I chose for a title today, When God Changes the Direction in Your Life. When God Changes the Direction in Your Life. Picture yourself heading to work one morning. You, you go your regular route <clears throat> and, 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 and you, you're sitting there in traffic and and, and Everything is just, just messed up all around you. And then you find out that overnight, your, your favorite route, the road is closed. And so you're sitting there, and your anxiety level is getting higher and higher. <clears throat> you call your job, and, and the manager gets sarcastic with you. And, and so you're sitting there, and you're saying, Man, I don't have to take this. But that's the time that you have to remember that God is in control. And, and, and I know that, you know, you would be, y'all might be saying, but y'all be trying to fool me. Oh, I would just be praising the Lord. No, you wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. See, most of the time, people don't like change. See, I, I don't like change. I, I'm a creature of habit. You know, when I back out the driveway a lot of times at home, I go the same way out the neighborhood. The wife fuss at me all the time. You, you, why don't you go out this way? That's just the way I go. Go that way every time. So, see, I don't like change. I'll be honest. I don't like change. Because change is scary. It, it's, it's unknown, and most of the time, it's unsettling. See, it causes my stress level to just go through the roof. Because then I, it puts me in a whole new mode, because I, I think now I got I to gotta get another plan together. I got to put this together. I got to figure this out. I'm not in control anymore. Well... I mean, I think that. I'm never in control. We're never in control anyway. But, I mean, I think that. But I come this morning to talk about when God changes the direction in your life. 
See, we have to remember, I hate to be the bearer of bad news this morning to you, but I, I, I have to tell you this, that our plans are not the authority the universe operates by. Our plans are not the authority that the universe operates by. So it's not all about us. We're not all that and a cup of tea, too. God is in control of this. And you know, when, as I was studying this, 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 these, these passages, and, and I just say God's word is, is phenomenal. You know, several months ago during prayer meeting, I, I talked a little bit about this, this, this subject. But, but, but after I've had an in-depth study uh, about this exodus and the details and how the Israelites handled themselves, uh, how, how God's hand was, was, was staring and moving in it all the time, all I can say is it's, his word is phenomenal. And God changes the direction in our lives sometimes. You know, back in August... Uh, Late August, it, people went to bed not thinking anything and woke up the next morning, Hurricane Harvey. The direction in their lives was changed. Some of them was able to just say, well, I'm thankful that God didn't take any of my family's life. Some of them was so wrapped up in material things till they just didn't know what to do. But their direction changed. And as I looked at this, this, this exodus from Egypt, and it started back in chapter 13 of Exodus. And, and, and you, you know the story. You, you all, all of you know the story. Uh, the, 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 the blood on the doorpost. The, the, the firstborns. Verses 17 and 18 in Exodus chapter 13 says, Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near, that was the closest route. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by way of the wilderness of the Red Sea and the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. God didn't want them to have to face war because the Philistines would have went to war with them. God wanted a safe and peaceful route, a safe and peaceful exodus for the Israelites. But Scripture tells us that there were so many of the Israelites that that was a part of this exodus, said it was over 600,000 men, not including women and children and cattle. And there were also some Egyptians that went along. But as I was studying this, it said, man, Moses probably wished that some of those Egyptians would not have come along because they created havoc through the whole Journey. <laughs> Our scripture reading in verse so four said, And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. So who's going to get the honor? God's going to get the honor. God is going to get the honor. And, 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 it, and it says uh, God hardened his heart so God could be honored. And, you know, that was one of the things. It's, it's amazing and, and, and just phenomenal how the Bible ties together. And, and now we're talking about Old Testament scripture in Exodus. But when we go to the New Testament scripture, Romans 9, 17, Romans 9, 17 says, for the scripture said unto Pharaoh, I have appointed you for the very purpose of displaying my power in you, and so that my fame 
might spread throughout the earth. Is the Bible real? Look how it ties together. So my question today is, has God changed the direction in your life? Has he changed the direction in your life? I want to share with you four elements that I'll focus on today. And, 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 and key element one says you, you, you are marching to God's direction when you don't panic. Amen. I panic. Amen. I have to, I got to do better. Y'all pray for me. I, I panic. But it says when God changes the direction in your life, how do you respond? Do you panic? You know, we talk a good game. Oh, God is good. God, is, I love the Lord. But that's when God is good to us. See? <laughs> Everything is going as planned. We, God is good. I love the Lord. But how are we when things change and we're not in control any longer? See, when God changed the Israelites' direction in verse 1 and 2, that's when the trouble started. That's where the trouble came in. God changed their direction. And see, Pharaoh was feeling pretty good about himself after seeing how they were uh, uh, doing in the wilderness. And, and, and that's when he said, well, they entangle in the land. They're going to be easy prey. We'll just swoop in and, you know, with all his military savvy, he, was, he just knew he just had them. He said they were confused and perplexed and, you know, like they were out of their mind. What were they doing? Because they had placed the bitter lakes on their left and were marching southward in a direction which would soon put the Red Sea on one side of them and the desert region called Jebel Ataka on the other. Pharaoh still, after all God had done, he still didn't really know who he was dealing with. He didn't know who he was dealing with. Patriots and Prophets, page 297, talked about how the Israelites were crying and wailing and, and when they looked and saw the Egyptians were, were coming. And it said that they became unreasonable and sometimes violent. Unreasonable and violent. <laughs> Are we like that? You get in that panic mode. And, and you're out of control. <laughs> Key element number two. And you're still marching to God's direction when you are prepared. See? You don't know that the direction change in your life may be preparing you for something down the road. See, I talked earlier about the number of people that was in this exodus. And Moses felt overwhelmed. And he was wondering, how am I going to manage such a large crowd of people? But then he remembered the training that he had received in the royal palace. See, sometimes we question, why are we having to do this? Or why are we having to do that? Uh, uh, why am I going through this? And why am I going through that? Sometimes just sit back and let the Lord work. He has a plan. He takes us through different things to get us ready and prepared for some futuristic event that's going to take place in your life where you're going to need that training. Heard some people say, just enjoy the ride. So when those things come to fruition, you'll you have the training. Little 
did Moses know that the training that he got back in the royal palace was going to help him that far down the road? See, we always want as Christians, and, and I know I, I, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about me too. We, we want everything rosy and peachy. I don't want no bumps in the road. Just <laughs> let me just straight and narrow and smooth. But let me share this with you. If you just have sunshine in your life, it says sunshine alone creates a desert. Sunshine alone creates a desert. And as we go through this Christian experience, it, sa it says you never truly test the power of God until you attempt the impossible. Until you attempt the impossible. Moses was attempting the impossible trying to lead that many people and that larger crowd on an exodus. Key element number three, you're still marching in God's direction when doors are open for you. See, God wants you to keep moving forward. He has a divine plan already set for your life. And no matter how we cut it or try to slice it or dice it, God is going to get the glory out of our circumstances. So let's get off the soapbox about it's all about me. No, it's not. It's all about God and his plan for your life. You know, a month or so ago, our praise team sung a song that, that, that was titled, Going Forward, No Turning Back. Going Forward, No Turning Back. And you know, I always say that I've come too far, been through too much to turn around now. I got to go to the end to see what the end going to be. And as Christians today, we need to make that decision in our lives, in your life, that you're, going, you know, you're not going to turn back no matter what. Things are going to happen. It's going to be crazy, falling, stuff falling down all around you, but continue to trust in God. No turning back. No turning back. My last key element, number four. Say you are marching to God's direction when you are taking action. When you are taking action. See, sometimes God wants us to stop praying about it <laughs> Amen. and get moving. Amen. 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 Exodus 14, verse 15 says this. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Now I look that up in another translation. And here's how the living Bible put it. Then the Lord said to Moses, Quit praying and get the people moving. Forward, march. Get the people moving. Forward, march. We know that prayer changes things. But sometimes we just pray. And we pray. And we pray. And we keep praying. God wants us to take action sometimes. Amen. See, you need a job, and you just say, I'm praying for a job. Well, you need to get, uh, you need to get out of bed, 
You need to get a resume put together. You need to find that job, pick out that job that you want, and then you can start praying about it. You can't just lay in bed all day and say, I'm praying for a job. It's not, it's not coming to your doorstep. You, you want to own your own business. So you have to, you have to learn how to write a business plan. You, you, you talk to those, you interview those that are in the business. See how, how they're making it and, and the things they're doing. See, we, we have prayed about it, and, and, and we say, we, we've, I've prayed about it, and nothing has happened. Well, I'm waiting on the Lord. Well, have you ever thought that the Lord might be waiting on you? He's waiting on you to get moving. Take some action. Israel only gained the victory by moving forward. And that's what he was telling Moses. Get the people moving. I'm going to take care of it. You just get them moving. After they crossed the Red Sea. Said Miriam. Got her tamarind. They had a victory party. They sung a song of victory. And then I looked in Revelation 15, verses 2 and 3, and it was talking about us standing victorious, singing the song of Moses. Singing the song of Moses. Psalms 146, 2 says, While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. While you're alive, got to praise him. Got to praise him. Again, in Patriots and Prophets, page 302, talked about how we as Christians are often uh, beset by dangers. Um, and and duty, seems to, it's talk, duty seems to get harder and harder to perform. But in all that's happening, in all of that that's happening, it still says, go forward. You've got to keep moving. Because the things that trouble us, they, they not don't ever go away. If you sit around and wait till the, the, the passage for selling is clear and you're not going to have any obstacles, you're not ever going to go anywhere. Because they're never going to go away. But we have to remember that the path where God leads the way, it may go through the desert or it may go through the sea. But whichever route it goes, it is a safe path. See, when God changes the direction in your life, be ready to follow his lead. That may not be so easy. And I'm talking to myself, too, because I told you I panic. I don't like change. I got this thing lined out the way I think it ought to go, and that's the way I want to go. And then God comes and, and messes with it. But he's doing it for my good. As I prepare to close today, I'm reminded how God provided for the Israelites time and time and time again. And they murmured and they complained and they cried. First, he got them, took them through the Exodus. Then he saved them from Pharaoh. Then they complained there was no water. He provided water when there was none. Then they said they didn't have food. They was going to starve to death. Should have left them in Egypt. 
He provided manna out of heaven. And I'm sure at some point long in there, God probably said, how many times? How many times? And God provides for us every day. Every day of our lives, he provides for us. And yet, some of us complain on every front. I don't have this. I want this. I, I don't have enough of this. I don't have enough of that. And I wonder if God is saying to us today, how many times must I prove my love for you? How many times? How many times? How many times? God says he'll be there with us. If we can just remember what he's done for us already. If the Israelites would have just remembered the last miracle that God performed. From one challenge to the next, God was there with them. And just like he was with them, he'll be with us today. I always say that we have to have the ministry of remembrance. How did you get here today? How did you get here today? And I'm not talking about driving up in your car. I'm, I'm talking about as the years have rolled up. God has been there by your side. And it reminds me of a song that I heard last week. It was an old song say, says, Stand By Me. Say, when the storms are raging in my life, stand by me. When the world tosses you like a ship up on the sea, stand by me. Has God stood by you? You're here today to prove that he has and he will no matter how many detours no matter how many times he's changed the direction in your life he will stand by you he will stand by you and I don't want God to have to ask me how many times must I prove my love for you, Willie Walker, before I get it? I want to be able to remember what he has done from time to time to time and again. So I'm going to ask this morning, this afternoon, if you don't want God to have to ask you, how many times must I prove my love for you? I'm going to ask you to stand with me this morning. Because that means that you're signifying and saying that, Lord, I'm going to use my memory, the ministry of remembering how many times you've already brought me through. closed. Lord, we thank you for bringing us through. We thank you for standing 
by our side. And Lord, I know that it's been many, many, many times that you have brought me through. And I remember. And Lord, I pray that you will help us to where you will never have to ask us that question of how many times must I prove my love for you. Now, Lord, as we pause in this prayer, I want to open the doors of the church. There may be someone here today that wants to give their life to you. So I'm going to ask now, if there is, I'm going to ask if you will just come down front now. Don't worry about your neighbor. God will stand by you. God will be there for you. Will there be one? Will there be one? Father, I thank you for what you have done for me today. And Lord, as we go through our Christian walk, help us to accept the change of direction that you may have for our lives. Be able to receive it be able to not panic and realize that you are doing it for your honor and glory. And it's not about us. It's all about you. So, Lord, we thank you today. We thank you for just standing there by us, being beside us through everything. When it's good, when it's bad, we can count on you and know that you are there for us. And so, Lord, we thank you today. We praise you. And we ask it all, and we thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God for Elder Walker bringing that sermon to us, reminding us that we serve a God who loves us so much that he's willing to prove his love towards us. Let us bow our heads. Dear and Father, Lord, I thank you again for proving your love to us daily. Lord, the simple fact that we could breathe in our nostrils and expose the air that's within inside of our bodies, that is your grace and your mercy towards us. So, Lord, when the challenging things that you allow to come in our way to grow us, Lord, help us not to panic, but help us to know that all we need to do is consider it pure joy. Thank you again for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And before you leave, we're going to have a short presentation on safety. You remain, please remain seated. As you can see, May 26th, we're going to be having our safety plan being instituted at Berean. May 26th. And the goal is to plan, prepare, and practice. Have a wonderful Sabbath day. You are now dismissed at the leading of the ushers. <laughs>